What's up everybody, welcome back to another episode of All the Mods Expert Mode. Oh yeah guys, so I just got done moving our Batania area from upstairs, outside, to down here. Thanks to our magic style mods, right? We got our blood magic stuff around and just kind of makes sense to hang it out over here. So this isn't the big setup that we did for the Terra Steel. This was our smaller setup that we were using just for simple crafting, dropping items in the mana pool maybe making some runes, things like that. I think we're also using this to make, uh, or I guess send power to the botanical brewery, which we might add on to this at some point in the future. But yeah, I figured, you know, it just kind of makes sense. Instead of having this outside, we should bring it down here and then we should also hook it up to apply it energistic. So I did a little bit of that. I ran, I ran our P2P wire over here. Right? And we just have an export bus going to the bottom side of our dispenser to provide it with toast. So that's pretty much the only automation I've done with this thing beyond what we've already set up in the past. Uh, so we have the redstone comparator comparing the mana pool here. And we have a potentiometer from Draconic Evolution set to 14. So when this is uh, 14 out of 15 percent full, 14 out of 15 full, uh, it will send a redstone signal, which will go to the bottom side of our timer, shutting this thing off. Otherwise, this will, oh, that's it incorrectly. This will uh, click every 70 ticks, sending a piece of toast onto our Gore Morales here, which will send mana to our mana spreader and into the mana pool to fill it back up. So it's a fairly automated system at this point. And now the toast is always full for us from our ME system, which is really, really nice. So the only thing we need to do is just interact with this mana pool in whichever way we want to do that. So what I want to do is I want to auto craft some things with the mana pool. One of those things being mana glass. Now we do need mana glass in order to make ourselves basic capacitors. And we've been needing the basic capacitors <laughs> in order to make the double layer capacitors, right? And then with the double layer, we've been using those to make the octatic. So yeah, we do need a lot of mana glass. I think that's eight pieces of mana glass going to each one of these things. So instead of just making that every so often, I definitely want to make that an automated craft. So we're going to use applied energistics to do that. Uh, so a way we can do that is we can have a recipe set up over here that is going to make greenhouse glass which we have a recipe for that. Uh, so if I wanted to make one of those that requires four glass, which is already auto craftable, and then it needs four camouflage paneling, which we have a limited supply. That's not auto craftable at this time. So let's go ahead and make one of, well, I guess four of those. So camouflaged paneling. Yeah, this is not auto craftable. If we take all those out, it just kind of goes away. We don't have a recipe. So I would like to set up a recipe to make these things because that's part of it. Uh, the, so we already had the glass set up. If we set this up, then we can make the greenhouse glass automatically all the time, even when we run out. And then we can just take the greenhouse glass and have this stuff drop onto our mana pool, right? To make the mana glass. So that is definitely what I want to do. So let's start off, first of all, by automating, uh, which one is it? It is, I think it's the carpenter. I think it's the carpenter here. Yeah, that requires the ash the planks and the wood pulp plus it needs biomass in order to make these camouflage paneling. So we saw that pretty early on on how to do that. Uh, so we need to feed a fermenter, some kind of material in order to make the biomass and we need it to have the fertilizer. We need to take the fluid from that and put it over into the carpenter to make sure this is full. Yep. And then we just need to feed in this recipe. Or as we've seen before, we can substitute all these different dyes for just one color dye. We can use lapis, six lapis, or whatever. So yeah, let's go ahead and start getting that figured out. All right, guys. So I got a few things done here. Uh, our fermenter now has its own ender tank. So we are providing that water. We are auto extracting out of that with the ender fluid conduit. And it is going into here. So this ender fluid conduit I have set to in out mode and on the extract, we have a filter. So it's only going to extract biomass. I don't know if you could ever get it to extract water, but I just want to make sure. Uh, and then over on our carpenter here, we have a ender fluid conduit on here set to insert with filtering on biomass. Again, uh, since we're sharing the same conduit as the one that's putting water in, I want to make sure like 
if for whatever reason we ever run out of biomass, this doesn't fill up with water. Anyway, so those are all filtered. Uh, we are providing this with wheat. Yeah, wheat plus fertilizer. On the back of here, we do have fertilizer and wheat being provided through the ME export bus with the capacity card. Although one thing I am realizing is that is gonna need a crafting card too. Uh, that's something that I forgot to do. We don't have large amounts of fertilizer in the system. In fact, I think we only had eight. So we have one more piece in there that's now probably going to get uh, put in through the export bus. So yeah, let's go ahead and make a crafting card real quick. There we go. So that will allow the export bus to craft an item should there not be one available. You can just shift click that on there and that goes in, right? So now we have fertilizer and wheat available. So now if the system needs to craft any fertilizer so it can export it, it'll be able to do that. But I think it's going to try and fill up the wheat first and then if the, that's full, it fills this up. I'm not sure if that's how that works. I don't see anything going into that one, huh? Yeah, maybe we should put fertilizer in the center and then wheat on the outside. Maybe it'll always prioritize fertilizer first since that's a slower moving thing. Uh, it looks like the fertilizer we had in here went away. So let's just grab one piece of wheat here. Oh, I had one in my inventory and we can grab a fertilizer out of here and we'll swap those around to hopefully try and make it prioritize the fertilizer first. And then the wheat on the outside, maybe it'll do it that way. No, it doesn't look like it wants to put any fertilizer in there, does it? I wonder if the fertilizer has to go in through a certain side. Anyway, I'll figure that out later. This fertilizer is going to last for a while. Uh, and we won't be using <laughs> too much of it in the meantime. So let's set up a pattern for our uh, camouflage paneling. So... Oh, you know what? I didn't put a recipe in the system for the fertilizer. That might be one of the reasons why it's not working right now is because the system doesn't know how to craft that. If we put that there, maybe now it's going to work. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, yeah, that works. So now the fertilizer is full. Wheat's full. This is full. Everything's happy. Okay, so we want to set up a recipe for this. So that requires a wood pulp. It requires six. We're going to use six lapis. It's going to require uh, one ash and then one plank okay so that should be quite an easy one to set up over here so we will make a pattern we want this a processing pattern and again one of those one of those one of these and we will give it eight lapis and again you can use like practically any type of dye you want as long as it's one of those three yellow red or the blue so i think that should be just fine and that is going to equal four of these panelings and that is pretty much all we got to do. Now there is, you know, more to this. Eventually we will run out of that ash. Um, we need an interface over here. Yeah, we will eventually run out of that ash. And that ash is made from peat. And we don't have a way to get that automated just yet. We might get that automated in the future. There is a bee that makes peat. So maybe by the time we need it, we'll already be into the bees. And that'll be super easy for us to do. I don't know. So anyway, there's our processing pattern. We do need to connect that to the applied energistics, which is easy enough. I got some cabling on me. How do I want to do that? Maybe like this. Okay. That's fine. So that processing pattern should be good to go. Uh, we do need to get the resulting items out of the carpenter and back into that interface to complete the recipe. So let's grab item conduit. Just need two of those, I do believe. And that should be all we need to do here. Hmm, kind of looking at this thing. It's a good way to get the items out. I guess we could put the conduit in the front. I guess that'll be fine. Alternatively, in the back, we could have the interface connected with an ME conduit and then have it all in the back. But for right now, this is just going to get the job done. I can always change these around later. It's not like this is a super complicated thing to do here. So we're just always extracting out of the carpenter. And we're always trying to insert into the interface. So now let's take all of these things out of here. We'll put those into the system and see if we can tell it to craft these things. And hopefully everything is going to work. Okay. Uh, controller. So we want, we want to make ourselves some camouflage paneling. So we have 284 in the system. Tell it to make one. Let's just go over there and see if this thing is working. Looks like it has everything it needs to craft that. It is a pretty slow craft, and we can make it faster with the acceleration wand. 
And there we go. Okay, looks like everything is good to go. That's a pretty easy thing to set up. So now, as far as mana glass goes, we should be... Yeah, we have glass auto-crafted. We have camouflage paneling auto-crafted. So now we need to get a way to get greenhouse glass dropped into the mana pool, collected, and then put back into the system. So uh, Batania has a thing called an open crate. This guy right here. So any items that get pushed into this get dropped immediately. I guess I'm not on the crafting grid over here. Uh, so that requires living wood planks. And we just have regular living wood. Okay, so we'll have one extra plank in the system. Cool. So there's that. So we can use this, put an interface on that guy, and have it sitting right above the mana pool here. Let's just use like a spacer block. And then you can put the open crate right there. Cool. So then we can put an interface on this guy. Uh, and then any items that get pushed in there get dropped down onto the mana pool to be created into something. Now, I don't know. Do we have any mana items in here for testing? We don't really have anything. I guess mana glass would be the next thing. So let's make a pattern here. Another processing pattern. We'll do the greenhouse glass. One of those is going to equal a mana glass. Right? So there's that pattern. We need to make ourselves another interface. All right, so we can take this guy and just stick it right there. Looks like we're going to need a torch. Uh, we can go down here and connect directly to that ME conduit or glass cable. All right, ME glass cable, like so. All right, so that interface now has a pattern. So... We're almost to the point where we can try and auto craft this. We still need a way to collect the item and then put it back into here. Now, I don't know what's the best way to collect items. We've been doing it a few different ways uh, in this series. Like we've been collecting them with the vacuum chest, which has a filter. We've been collecting items downstairs. Uh, did I not go down one? Oh, you know what? I think I'm too far over. We've been collecting items down here somewhere <laughs> okay you know what let's just go down the stairs we've been collecting items on this other floor down here using the ender hopper right which is a good way to do it but the ender hopper itself doesn't really have an interface so the only way that we can collect items is by putting them into a drawer right uh we can put them into a drawer that's locked so only it'll collect those specific items because those are the only items it knows about maybe that's a good way of doing it we could have a few of these two by two drawers Touching a uh, drawer controller and put the uh, put the, an ender hopper on a drawer controller so it knows about those items. Uh, yeah, there's a few different ways we could do that. Again, I don't know what the best way. There's no like, I don't think there's any specific item collectors that are filtered. Uh, there might be other ways to do this. I kind of like the ender hopper method on a drawer controller with two by two drawers that are locked. So it will only ever pick up certain items. So I think we might go that way. All right, guys. So I decided to go with the ender hopper. We have the ender hopper sitting on top of a controller slave. And then down below the controller slave, we have a basic two by two drawer. We have that set for mana glass, mana dust, mana pearl, mana diamond. If we need any more items here to filter, we can just add another 2x2 two two drawer, lock it, set the item, and then we're good to go. Uh, back here, we have the drawer controller, and then we have an import bus on the drawer controller uh, with just a couple acceleration cars to pull out any items that appear in this chest. Uh, so the only items that are ever going to appear in this chest are the ones that we have set for auto craft, right? So whenever we craft an item, we drop an ender pearl. It's never going to pick up the ender pearl. It'll only pick up the resulting mana pearl, put it into that chest, we get you imported into the system, and that should complete the recipe. Haven't tried it yet. I assume it's gonna work. Let's give it a try. So let's make ourselves mana glass. So we wanna make 40, or let's make another 20. We'll have a total of 40 of those. So we'll start that up. That should be dropping, yeah, those items over here. Those are now being collected. Looks like they all were. All right, and then we have 40 mana glass. That's awesome. Let's make 10 mana pearls. Why not? So that should be just dropping under pearls over here. Those all get converted into the mana pearls and they all get collected. Cool. 
Uh, as our mana runs low, this comparator turns off, which allows the timer to run, and it sends more bread, more toast, onto our Gormoralis, which then makes more mana, and then it'll turn itself off when that gets back to where it needs to be. So we're pretty much fully automated here with our Batania crafting, which is super awesome. I like it. Okay, so now we have a Tanya glass being always generated. Uh, now we can set a recipe for the um, the comparator. No, not comparator. I'm sorry, the capacitor. So we have these guys here. Basic capacitor. Now, basic capacitor uh, does require empowered redstone crystal so we should look at getting that set up to be automated and also requires silver clumps now silver clumps are made with silver ore put through our purification chamber with oxygen right so we set that up a while ago so we could get these things going and that's our machines over here uh so our electrolytic separator is taking in water separating out hydrogen which we're dumping excess and then it is also creating oxygen which is being sent over to here to our purification chamber so what we need to do is get ourselves another interface here and another pattern that says one silver ore is going to equal three of the clumps right so that's a pretty easy thing to do uh the other thing is we need to get our empowered redstonia crystals automated so i've never tried in automating the empowerer the only thing i've done before with these things to kind of semi-automate is like what we did before is have like some chests that feed into each one of these guys, right? And then we have a chest that feeds into here and another one that pulls out. But I would like to set this up through Applied Energistics where I can say, hey, make empowered redstone crystals and it'll put a redstone block over there. It'll laser it, it'll put that right here and then it'll put all the items around the outside. So that's probably gonna take a little bit of thought for me to get this going. I have a pretty good idea on how to do it. So what I'll do now, I'll go ahead and start running some applied energistics over here, kind of thinking through this process, and then we'll be back. All right, guys, so I ran some power cables around for our display stands here, right? Uh, and then I also ran some item conduit around. The item conduit all feeds off this oak chest here, and that oak chest is gonna get items from the enemy interface. In interface is gonna have a pattern here, which is gonna dump the items into here. Right, and then that'll get distributed. So uh, on the extract setting of this conduit, we have an item conduit speed downgrade. Although I'm not entirely sure if that's necessary, uh, but we want that set up and we do want round robin enabled. So it's going to go around and try to put one item into each of the spots. Uh, this very center one, the empower itself, we have set to a higher priority, so that should be the first item that gets placed in, and then I believe it's gonna try and put one item into each of the display stands. That's the idea here anyway. So yeah, I think that's the only thing that needs to be shown down here. So with the, uh, the, inf the ME interface, I have renamed to Empowered. I just put on the Anvil, cost one level, change the name so when we look on the interface terminal, It'll show up over here as if as an oak chest and an empower, right? So that's where we're going to put in our recipes. So I did make a recipe here. One redstonia crystal block plus a brick, another brick, redstone, and a red die is going to equal an empowered crystal block. So we have that recipe here. So we can throw that into the empower. Let's go and do that. And then I have another recipe here that converts from the block into the crystals themselves. We'll just throw that into, uh, into here somewhere. That should be fine right like that. Cool. So now we can tell the system to try and craft one of these things and we will see <laughs> if this works. Uh, I did put in some other recipes before we start that. Uh, I put some recipes over here on our electric furnace so we can make another brick out of nether rack and brick out of clay. I think those are the only two other recipes that we had to do for that. So again, empowered redstone crystal. Let's try and make one and let's see what happens. That looks like that is working correctly. So the next thing I want to see is if we do multiple recipes, does that break or does that work? Oh, here's another thing I forgot to do. Uh, I put extract always active on that thing on a different color channel 
on the brown channel. So we need to take this conduit and put it on top of this interface on brown insert only. So let's give that a try here. So if I do that, we can do insert brown. I think that should have done it. Yeah, that crystal is no longer there. So let's try doing multiple and let's see what happens here. So if I do the empowered block, if I tell it to make, I don't know, 10, let's see if that works. Yeah, that's not gonna work, is it? Okay, so we need to change this a little bit here. Um, I'm not entirely sure the best way of doing that other than setting a filter on each one of these guys. Another thing we could do is if we set the blocking mode on this, it'll only allow the one recipe, so there'll only be one of every item in there. That might be another way we do this. Hmm. Yeah, definitely this is not working. Okay, so let's... Let's undo what just happened here. That went to the right spot because that's filtered. All right, get rid of that. Get rid of this. We'll have to tell the system to cancel that craft. Cancel that, all right. And we'll put all those items back in here so it should be able to craft those up. So let's try setting this to blocking mode. Do not push crafting items if inventory contains items. So again, that should push in a full recipe, but not put in like, you know, all 10 recipes until the first set of items have gone away. And then it'll, once all of these things are filled, it'll put the next one in and it should do it again. And I think that should solve the problem. We'll give that a try and see how that works. So if we tell it to do the empowered crystals again, let's tell it to make 10. I'm not sure why that item went here. Are we going to have to... Hmm. This should be the highest priority, so it should be trying to put the item there first. I'm not sure how that works, though, because obviously this failed. Maybe we're going to have to put in an item filter on each one of these different display stands to blacklist the items that go into the center. Okay, well, I guess I'll have to play around with this a little bit longer and see if I can come up with something. All right, guys, so I added an advanced filter to each one of the display stands, put on blacklist, and put the, or the Redstonia crystal, the block that's supposed to go to the display stand, or I guess the empower in the center. I put that all to blacklist. So I think that should get it to work. <laughs> we'll go ahead and give it a try here. So if we tell it once again to make the empowered stuff and we tell it to make 10 of those, it is on blocking mode and each one of those display stands are set to blacklist that center block. I think it should work. We'll go ahead and give this a try here. Uh, let's accelerate this. Get that one to be done. All right, so that looks like that works. And again, working. I think we're good to go. Now, for every time that we need a new recipe, whatever the item is that goes in the center, we are going to have to blacklist that on all of those and whitelist it specifically on the empower. Or I guess if we just had it, no, 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 that's the way we want it. Otherwise, we might get one of these that go on the display stand to go to the center. So we do have to whitelist and blacklist all of those items. Okay, so that's pretty awesome. So we now finally have this thing fully automatic, which is great. Uh, we'll just have to add in recipes and things like that for the diamond ones and the emerald ones and all those kinds of things. But yeah, that is one of those items that's such a pain to have to do manually all the time, especially when you're switching between different recipes and all of that. So yeah, pretty happy about this. Well, the final step of that was to put an interface on our purification chamber here and add in the pattern for one silver ore equals three silver clumps. Uh, I set the site config, so the back is the output, the top is the input, and then the extra, I guess, is this thing from the side over here that was set previously. So we should be good to go. Now on the back, I just have a conduit, extract always active, going back into the interface, and uh, for now, we're running the ME conduit, or I guess the glass cable this way, into an ME conduit that's making the final connection there. So everything should be good. Now, if I tell the system to make the capacitor, if I want to make like a hundred basic capacitors, it looks like we are now able to do that. That's a craft of 60 mana glass. 
Uh, it has to craft up 180 silver clumps and it has to make 60 recipes of the greenhouse glass, or I guess 60 total. I'm not sure if that's recipes or not. Uh, we had the empowered redstone crystals. So I guess we should be good to go. Let's go and try it. If I tell it to start up, we might see it make some mana glass. We might see it doing some of the clumps over here. I'm not... Yeah, okay, so it looks like it's doing the silver clumps first. So that's working for sure. That's good. Okay, so that's working. Uh, did it do... Okay, so it made some mana glass. That happened. That's good. I don't think we had to do anything with the empower since we already had some of those redstonia crystals ready to go... Awesome. So let's take a look at the crafting status over here and see what we got. So it is currently, yeah, just crafting up the silver clumps and everything else should be good. It looks like it's already made some of our basic capacitors here. Uh, yeah, we have 71 of them in the system. That is super awesome. This recipe, trying to do this by hand is such a pain. And now we don't ever have to worry about doing it by hand again, which is amazing. All right, so it looks like it is almost done here. Just need a few more of these silver clumps to finish through a purification chamber, which does have the maximum speed upgrades. And there we go. There's 100 basic capacitors. So there's a few more things that we still need to add on. As we need more auto craft, and we keep adding those on, uh, like, for instance, our alloy smelter over here, we need a recipe to make the advanced alloys. That's the wrong one. Uh, let's take a look. Alloy. We needed to make the energetic alloy, and then we also need a recipe for the vibrant. I did put in a recipe here for solarium, and then over on our slice and splice, I put in a recipe here for a Z logic. Since I had to make a few of those for those advanced item filters that we have on our empowerer. All right, guys. Well, we are coming along quite nicely in the whole automation process <laughs> in this mod pack. Yeah, that's super awesome. Getting the Empowerer, auto-crafting, that's great. We just have to keep adding in the recipes as we need to auto-craft things more and more. And getting all of these other things going. Yeah, the, the Mana Glass, getting the Redstone block through that laser over there. I didn't show that one, but it's a simple addition from what we already did. Getting the Batania stuff hooked up to be automated. This is a great one, too. I don't know if I should lower the Open Crate down one block or not, if that makes a difference. But yeah, we got the mana being auto-generated, auto-crafted. We have the, the fuel for the mana being auto-done. Yeah, so many things. It's so good. Anyway, guys, we're going to go and wrap the episode up here for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.